stepmom kicked me out at 18, but I caught her secrets on tape. One played during her speech, and her life fell apart. Barbara was only 15 years older than me, so she was a lot younger than my dad, who was 44, and she was like 26. She also didn't speak Chinese in the same dialect at first. Which was inconvenient for our convenience store because we lived in a Chinese part of town where most of the customers were Chinese Mandarin, and only once in a while white or black people come in, so her English wasn't such an advantage. Barbara was nice to me at first, so I thought she was a good person. I was not yet 12 when they got married and she moved into our house. From what I know about her, her family is quite wealthy in China, and they paid for a nice wedding and they all came to America for it. My dad was the sort of guy never to let anyone pay his way though, so he kept on working like a maniac every day. Once they got married, Barbara changed at least towards me. She was no longer big sis like she tried to portray herself when she and my dad were dating where she treated me as a peer. But now she was super strict and controlling. She no longer let me help out around the shop like before. It's not like Cinderella where the mom would force the kid to do all this work, but she did tend to isolate me from my father. Over the next few years, she convinced my dad to sponsor all sorts of her relatives and friends to come over from China to live in America. He would set these people up with businesses because even though my dad wasn't rich, he was very bright and knew how to make money. They would open little restaurants, dry cleaners, cell phone repair shops, things like that. Pretty much all the little foreign mom and pop shops you see in any small town. My dad helped make those things, except the owners were Chinese guys. When I was 17, my dad developed lung cancer due to smoking heavily ever since he was 13. He died only two years later at only 52, when I was a kid. I always had in mind to one day take over my dad's store when he retired. Now that I was 19, I was still too young to sell liquor. But I surely thought Barbara would let me work in the store now that my dad was gone. No such luck. She had one of her adult cousins take over the store, and the guy hired only his own friends and family to work in it. So the store my dad built from nothing was no longer part of my life. Barbara also had my dad fix his will so that she got almost all of his money, which again, although he wasn't Bill Gates, rich was several hundreds of thousands of dollars. I didn't really care about the money. Barbara can have it, but it still sucks. He got all his money and her family is already rich. I think she was just using my dad to transport her clan from China to America. But that's just my theory. All the money in the world cannot pay to bring my dad back and I'd rather have that than cash. But I digress. However, after saying that, I will admit my dad set aside a small trust for me that was enough to put me through junior college. Also, the minute I turned 18, Barbara threw me out of the house my dad bought and paid for with his hard work. This is not a place for you. You go now. Bye, bye. She owned it because she was his wife. And now that my dad was dead, Barbara could move her new boyfriend into the house in his place. Her new boyfriend was a big fat scumbag from Taiwan who, from what I hear, was a big shot mobster in his home country. But here in America, he just played mahjong all day and lived off his wife's money in my dad's house. Honestly, I think he was hanging out in America to avoid gang trouble in Asia. Also, I think my stepmom got with him because he has connections in China and Taiwan and maybe some fraud is going on. Before I got kicked out of my dad's house, my stepmom used my dad's money to invest in a couple of apartment buildings. I eventually heard that she was renting out rooms to various traffickers and basically there were bordellos. This was all stuff I found out later, along with the news, that she not only made big money off rents, but the traffickers were giving her a kickback on money they earned. I will say this for Barbara. She's a very beautiful woman physically, and it's easy to see why my father was attracted to her. Though if I think of her as not my stepmom, she personally does nothing for me. She often got men to do what she wanted because she was pretty. I'm also quite certain that she gave them more than I candy. But aside from one very important case, I cannot prove it. What was that case? Well, I moved in with my nice aunt who sheltered me when I went to college for a degree in computer engineering. My smaller inheritance paid for a couple of years of school. My aunt was nice to me, and even though she was still taking care of her own children, she had one son who already married and had his own family, but three daughters who still lived at home and were unmarried. She didn't ask me for rent. Her own husband had passed away long ago, so I got to play man of the house, taking care of the yard and fixing things like cars and computers while I lived there. After a couple of years, I lose touch with Barbara and just concede that she won. I also got a job at a computer hobby store where I am soup upper of computers to make them go fast. It's a good experience, and though the money isn't so great, at least, hey, it is some money. And I'm starting to make a name of myself in the world, or at least in our small city. When I say small city, I really do mean small city, and it's even smaller in a sense that Chinese people in that city tend to live all in one part of it and everyone knows one another. Eventually, I meet my own girlfriend, Kay, who is much of the same age as me and is going to school to be a nurse. After Kay and I am dating a few months, I start to meet her family. 
she knows about my living situation that I live with my aunt and that I have a mean stepmom who threw me out of my dad's house. But I never said Barbara's real name before, so I meet Kay's family, and she has an older brother, Mike, who is about 26. Mike is Chinese, like all of us, but he is very heavily tattooed, and he had spent some time in prison because he was a banger as a teenager and did time until his early 20s. He worked for a landscaping company, cutting grass and all that. He is what we call in our neighborhood a cowboy, but I don't know how accurate that translates in English to what I'm trying to say he is. Well, anyway, after Decay's house and seeing him around a couple of times, Mike overhears me answer one of Kay's questions about my stepmom, and Barbara's name comes up. Mike is saying, oh, excuse me, ma'am. Hey, Opie, did you say Barbara's real name? In my neighborhood, everyone calls her little sister May. So I say, yeah, that's my stepmom. Oh, he tells me. No offense, Opie, but I'm being your stepmom. No way. Evidently, Mike has sex with all sorts of women in the neighborhood and outside of it, too. He brags about all the white and black and Mexican ladies. He also landscapes. I haven't really thought about my stepmom other than talking about stuff in the past, so it was interesting hearing what she was up to. I mean, other than being my girlfriend's brother. Mike tells us that Barbara uses her apartment building as a giant cat house where pimps set up their women. Barbara never actually told him this, but he deduced it like an Asian thug version of Sherlock Holmes. He says that a lot of people he knew in prison got put in jail that way. Also, that my stepmom was running for a seat for city council, playing up the fact that she was a hard-working woman of color, blah, 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 and had aspirations for even higher office. It's clear she wanted to make herself a little empire. Kay asked her brother if he would help us put my stepmom in jail. She had her account set up, so it was really hard to prove she actually knew exactly what her tenants were doing in her buildings. But anyway, if the buildings were shut down, it would at least hurt Barbara's cash flow, and it would put an end to at least some abusive women. Mike said that he would have kept his mouth shut because he liked that my stepmom was basically showering him with money so that he could keep giving her the DH, but since his little sister was asking for help, he was willing to forego the money. I piped up and offered to pay him, even though no way I could pay as much as Barbara. He said, it's fine. You don't need to pay me anything. But if you hurt my little sister, I'll cut your balls off. Deal. So our plan we come up with was that Mike would set up his cell phone in an out-of-sight place in Barbara's room while they had sex. Basically a sex tape without her knowledge. Mike didn't care about his reputation in America and had plans to leave the country again anyway and go back to China as his own father had a business opportunity for him there. The idea of being it didn't bother him at all. Having spent time in jail and also being part of a gang subculture. He also didn't have any trouble scoring drugs, and evidently he did these drugs with Barbara all the time in her house. So on the day he made up her house, he also made sure to show that Barbara was doing drugs. He minimized his role so that it appeared that it was Barbara who scored the drugs and was offering them to him. He did make her at my suggestion to have her say a natural conversation. What day and year it was and that this was her pass away husband's house and that her current boyfriend was playing mahjong at a friend's house. Furthermore, Mike added a special touch where in the throes of sex he made Barbara denounce her Taiwan boyfriend as a weakling and a fool. Not a real man. And that only Mike was capable of giving her a no really hair raising stuff laugh out loud. All of it was in Chinese. But that was okay, as the audience would also be Chinese. Mike made sure that the video clearly showed Barbara's face. The video was obviously not professionally made. So thankfully we did not have to see any clear private parts. But it was very obvious what was going on in the film. All told, the video was 20 minutes long. We edited out most of the sex portions because those were unimportant. Really. When I say we, I mean Mike and me. Because of course Kate didn't want to look at her own brother and I didn't care to see Barbara either. And thankfully, I didn't really have to see any clear picture of her naked. Though it was obviously her and she was obviously naked. We shaved the video down to those parts where it was clearly showing Barbara's face. Her doing drugs. Talking about drugs and offering them to Mike. Her mentioning the date and that this was her pass away husband's house. Them in bed for a few seconds obviously doing it. And the funny part where she made fun of her Taiwanese boyfriend. The relevant video clip we made was slightly less than 10 seconds long. A few days later Mike went to China to meet up with his parents a week after that. As politics go, candidates often have to make speeches in front of audiences. And Barbara running for a seat in the city council was no different. Nobody really cares about city council meetings except other politicians and the few dozen people who go to such things. Reading up on her quickly, I learned that Barbara was presenting herself as a woman of high character. A business owner who had set up more than a dozen successful businesses in the area for other immigrants. So basically stealing credit for my father's work. But back to boring political meetings there. Definitely snoozer. 
but if something interesting happens, such as the politician saying something, Hitler would say someone getting assassinated or, I don't know, an attractive candidate suddenly randomly appearing it up for all to see in real time. News travels fast. So on the day that Barbara was making her little speech in front of maybe a hundred people at a local hotel conference room, the public was invited. Oh look, her boyfriend the Mahjong King was there too. And all of Barbara's cousins that my dad had sponsored to America and set up for business were there too. Nobody took notice of the young guy in dark sunglasses and beanie sitting in the front row holding a backpack. Even more so because the room was darkened except for the stage. Barbara was going to be the fourth speaker out of maybe six while the first speaker made a speech. I silently slid a bazooka Bluetooth speaker out of my backpack and put it near the stage. Such a speaker is about 20 inches tall, 8 diameter, and when set to maximum can be quite loud. I tested it at home to make sure. Yep, it would do as I predicted. The level of excitement of the first three speakers was like as entertaining as listening to Jessica Simpson try to rap. So it was really a trial to wait for Barbara's turn. So she finally gets on stage and talks about being a good family woman and so on. I pull out my smartphone and use its projector app along with a homemade projector box I built at work so that it could make a nice big image on the close behind wall. 10 seconds of Barbara telling us where she was, what date it was, how delicious ecstasy is, what her boyfriend is, and oh god, oh god, me, 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 Mikey, nice and loud. Thanks, bazooka speaker. The audience is so stunned. I have time to loop the video and play it again. Barbara is standing there with her mouth open, eyes wide. Someone in the crowd yells out in Chinese. Hey, that's Mike. Everyone knows Mike, especially a lot of the ladies. Just as the crowd is starting to reach a crescendo, I grabbed my speaker and projector box, stuffed them into my backpack, and slip out a side door where Kay is waiting with her car running. Before I made this getaway, I made sure to shout out, this is not a place for you, Barbara. You go now. Bye, bye. I then went to Kay's house and we were so, so happy. We got engaged. By that weekend, I was packed up and moving with Kay to stay with her uncle, who lived in a big house near my new school where I'm now finishing my degree. Kay is now a full right now. She brings most of the money, but soon I'll play a bigger role too. From what my aunt tells me, Barbara and her boyfriend broke up. And by broke up, I mean she fled the city because he literally wants to kill her. She lost her bid for a city council, obviously, thanks to an anonymous tip. Her bordello apartments were also shut down because of Barbara's shame. Lots of her relatives who own businesses, thanks to my dad, lost customers and a few have already gone out of business. The rest are failing fast. My dad's old house fell into foreclosure and now a nice white family lives there. They're the only white people on the block. So Godspeed. Round eyes. Barbara's guests made the rounds on tons of people's Facebooks before it got deleted because of community guidelines. Mike shared this trailer all over the internet to people he knows. And in our neighborhood, everyone knows one another since it was only a few seconds. Lots of people also posted it to their Instagram before it got deleted. Barbara's life is pretty much nuked. The full-length version got posted to various pay sites, but it hasn't leaked to any free streaming services. This is according to Mike. Never misses an opportunity to make some cash. Hey, yo, dad. I forgive you for not leaving me that much other than showing me how to be strong and stand up for myself. This was the best inheritance of all. You in heaven, unless this don't make me for hell instead. Love, Opie. This has got to be one of the best pro-revenge stories I have ever heard. Congrats, Opie, on writing a great tale. I'm so sorry you lost both of your parents at such a young age too. It does sound, however, like your aunt is a wonderful person. And I hope you know that. And I hope she knows that as well. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Karma Chameleon. If you enjoyed the video, I ask you to subscribe, like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.